Last year I drew over a hundred different characters in a black ink collage style on the inside covers of my Hobonichi Techos. I wanted to do something similar this year but with a little more oomph. I'm going to be exploring aesthetics and styles that are a little bit more complex and colorful and spark a lot more joy for me, which is surprisingly a hurdle for me in my art. I'd also like to use a lot of the art supplies in my collection that I feel like I've been neglecting in the past couple of years and there's kind of a lot. So this year I feel like 2022 is all about switching things up. Let's get started. But first, you know, K-pop. This year I'll be working in Hobonichi Original and a Week's Mega, but we're going to start out with the Week's Mega. It's a really beautiful, almost neon lime green, and I feel like highlighter colors and neon colors go really well with black. This year I'm going to be pairing it with a Lamy Safari for writing, in all black, of course, but for the actual design of the inside cover, I'm going to start out with some different pens. The inner cover of the Hobonichi Weeks is actually quite thick, which is really useful for what I'm about to do. It holds pen nicely without letting it bleed through to the other side of the page. And for the design, I'll be using a felt tip pen and an erasable ballpoint pen, just so the sketch lines don't leave anything behind. I really wanted to give this an elegant and mystical theme, so I went for the zodiac signs and the planetary signs arranged in an evenly spaced pattern over the top of the already existing Hobonichi pattern. Then I went over my favorite symbols in gold with a jelly roll. Now this pen usually sinks through and bleeds to the other side of the page on pretty much any paper I use it on, except for this paper, which made me pretty happy. Now that that's done, I'm just going to go in and add a drop shadow to all of these symbols with a zebra sarasa clip. And for the gilt letters, I'm going to go in and add a lighter, softer drop shadow with a Kuretake Zig clean color dot. This layout took me the least amount of time out of all of my Techo designs that I end up doing, um, even though it was freehand, at about half an hour, 45 minutes. It really didn't take me that long. On to the next page. I forgot to mention that I wanted this to be a sort of 90s, early 2000s sort of theme, um, things that were really interesting to me at the time, so I wanted to incorporate elements of like Game Boy games, and you saw the Sailor Moon symbols on the first page that I did. And for this next title page, I wanted to make it pretty simple, but I wanted to do a highlighter and black carry through, and I'm going to be making the lines slightly offset from the actual color underneath them almost like a bad printing job. I just feel like it gives it a lot of character and makes it a lot more interesting to look at. I also wanted to incorporate, as you see, a spacey theme that's going to go and kind of run through the entire book. As you can see, I'm also trying to keep the color palette pretty cool. Not a lot of pinks or warmer colors or anything like that.
Now we're getting into something a little bit more complex than I've done the last couple of pages. I wanted to carry over the theme of having my favorite characters on the inside covers of my Techo like I did for my last year, so I'm incorporating two of my favorite characters so that I can look at them whenever I decide to open the weeks. At first I was concerned at the complexity of this image and the use of primary colors instead of the cool tones and highlighters that I had been using before, and the use of paint pens made it too different for the theme that I had planned out for this book, but it was mentioned to me that this ended up looking like the first page of a manga or art book, where it's all in color and highly detailed, and then the rest of the book ends up being a lot more simplistic. I also thought that it kind of ended up looking like a tarot card more towards the end, which played into the theme that I had in mind anyway. Plus it's spacey, so. Then the sun started to go down on me, so that's all you get. Next, I'm going to start designing the inside cover of my Hobonichi original. I want the same Y2K themed feel, but with a more cute, colorful sort of thing. I'm also going to be incorporating one of my favorite effects of all time, transparency. Specifically in the form of transparent overlay that I designed a while back after seeing something like it on Instagram. I've done color and paint pens on acetate before, but for some reason I never thought to put stickers in washi. Go figure. Using scotch tape to affix this to the inside of the cover, it's going to be sort of purikura filter over the top of what I'm going to draw underneath it. Now onto the actual inside cover illustration. I know in my weeks I did fan art of other characters, but this time I'm going to do my own. These are my characters, Cade and Void, next to each other, taking a picture and drinking some of my favorite drinks of all time, rose milk tea and pokari sweat. And for the color, I'll be using Archer and Olive Acrylograph pens, which I got a while ago and didn't end up using very much because as much as I love paint pens, I just don't make the time to actually use them. So I'm gonna do that.
Now I could have stopped at this point, but I can't really leave well enough alone and I wanted it to feel a little bit more Pudikura-esque, so I decided to put a sort of vignette filter around the edge with a Copic marker, just to kind of bring the focus into the characters in the middle. Much better. Next it's time to decorate the title page. I'm going to be using these really cool notepads that look like MS Paint or Windows Windows, and it saves me a lot of time and effort while still sprucing up the page. Plus I can use them as frames and draw inside of them if I want. I'm also not using any black pen in this book. I'm only using blue pen or colored outlines, whereas with the weeks I was using only black to kind of complement the highlighter and neon colors. I feel like it gives that kind of shoujo beat type beat. It just gives it a softer feel overall. For my final trick, I'll be incorporating special effects onto this painting I did of my other OC, Shift, who you've probably seen me draw in a couple of other videos. For the green holographic highlights in his hair, I'm using Iluil watercolors, I'll link her shop below, I hope I'm saying it right, but she makes some of the most stunning iridescent paints I've lovingly dubbed stars in a half pan, because they really are just that beautiful. Anyway. After the base layer is all down, I'm making his shades and jacket using acetate overlay, which I fussy cut and then color with alcohol-based markers. Here, I'm using Copics.
I then affix it to the drawing with some adhesive tape. Add a couple stickers, and then you're done. Overall, I'm really happy with the results. It took me a long time to do everything in the books, and some of the stuff that I did didn't make it until the end segment because I didn't want this video to be 40 minutes long. But it really was a lot of fun to use all of my different stationary items and to bring in new techniques and designs, and to let loose and draw things that really made me happy. Be a girl, boy, baby. Boy, baby. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay gentle. Be kind, and I'll see you next time.